So I'm going to be discussing uh, emerging biomarkers for sepsis, trying to get us beyond procalcitonin. Uh, the publication ICU Management and Practice had a recent article that we prepared on this topic, uh, along with a couple of my colleagues. And uh, much of what I'll talk about is in this publication, if you're interested. Uh, and I thought I'd start with a role, a review of the potential roles of biomarkers, particularly in sepsis. Uh, and I think when you read the literature of biomarkers, it's extremely important to ask the question, what is it that the study is actually trying to do? Is it trying to tell us when to use antibiotics? Is it a bacterial versus a non-bacterial infection? How long should we use antibiotics, particularly in sepsis and pneumonia? How intensely should we treat? Do we add, do we de-escalate antibiotics? Can it help us define the site of care? And a lot of studies, particularly in sepsis, have used biomarkers to define prognosis. Now, what would be an ideal biomarker? We'd certainly want one that's highly specific for bacterial infection, that's not affected by prior antibiotic therapy or any other antibiotic therapy or steroids. It would work in most hosts independently of the immune status. It has prognostic value. Uh, we could identify infection early in the course of illness and the results would be available rapidly from a single serum sample. Costs would not be prohibitive and we could follow the results serially to guide the antibiotic use and duration. Now, no perfect biomarker exists, but these are the features that we strive to identify. Uh, in the surviving sepsis campaign, uh, procalcitonin was highlighted, and it was highlighted having two roles, not for deciding when to start therapy, but maybe to use it with clinical assessment to define the duration of therapy. And I think that this is probably a very important point to make, that we should not be using biomarkers to withhold antibiotic therapy in critically ill patients. That's a clinical assessment. Biomarkers may be adjunctive information, but it's very useful to have biomarker data, particularly collected serially, to determine the duration of antibiotic therapy. One of the larger ICU studies that generated tremendous interest in a biomarker like procalcitonin was the Dutch study several years ago, the SAP study, where over 1,500 ICU patients were compared in a randomized fashion, standard care to procalcitonin guided care. And procalcitonin guidance was dictated uh, by an algorithm. Uh, and the guidance led to less antibiotic use, shorter duration of therapy, and quite remarkably, a lower 28-day mortality. I think that this was what got many people's attention is the concept that antimicrobial stewardship was not only valuable for antibiotic use, but it had direct patient benefits in reducing mortality. And that benefit has been corroborated in other studies. There have also been an interest in using a biomarker like procalcitonin along with clinical assessment to decide when to use the ICU, so to determine prognosis. And in this study, uh, which looked at nearly 2,000 patients with CAP in the EPIC study, biomarker procalcitonin levels were combined with clinical assessments of severity criteria. And in the extremes here, if you had less than three severe pneumonia criteria and a low procalcitonin level, the need for ICU care was under 5%. And if you had more than three criteria, three or more, and a high procalcitonin level, the need for ICU care was in over 40%. And so biomarkers may have some prognostic value uh, and help us determine site of care. But we're looking for better biomarkers. And this very nice review, uh, which our host, uh, Dr. Vincent, was part of, highlights 258 biomarkers uh, that are currently being investigated. Uh, among those biomarkers, there are 26 that have been studied uh, in clinical trials of more than 300 people. Uh, and the gold standard to which they compare to is primarily C-reactive protein and procalcitonin. And highlighted in this review are multiple biomarkers that probably have better diagnostic value in sepsis than either procalcitonin or CRP, which gives us encouragement to be looking for new biomarkers to replace the ones that we are very familiar with now. I wanted to highlight a couple of them very quickly. Pentraxin is a sepsis biomarker. It's an acute phase reaction, reactant, and it's part of the innate immune system. Levels are higher with severe sepsis than in non-severe sepsis, 
And in that regard, it can help us diagnose severe sepsis. Uh, but when we also look at 17 studies, there was a higher value in non-survivors uh, than survivors, and it became a very good predictor of mortality. And that's shown here in this uh, graphic that again, it's an extremely good predictor of mortality. Another biomarker is presepsin, which is the soluble CD14 protein. Presepsin uh, results when CD14, which is a toll-like receptor, uh, binds to uh, a bacteria, particularly the LPS of gram negatives. And then there's cleavage of the CD14 LPS complex, either at the cell surface or internally uh, by the phagolysosome with release of CD14, uh, soluble CD14, uh, and that is presepsin. Uh, levels of presepsin decline and imp with improving infection and rise with persistent infection, and persistently elevated levels may predict adverse outcomes uh, in patients with sepsis. And again, this is graphically showing the production of soluble CD14 at the cell surface and at the phagolysosome level. A very important concept with biomarkers is that often they should be combined. And this was a study of 700 patients uh, with infection uh, in five Italian ICUs, and five different biomarkers were evaluated, procalcitonin, soluble phospholipase A2, presepsin, IL-2 receptor, alpha and S-TRAM, and the ROC curves for any single uh, biomarker were not nearly as valuable as the combined uh, combination of all the five biomarkers and the resulting ROC. And we can see from a formula here that the best ROC curve came with combining uh, the five different biomarkers. And so this is another concept and it may not be just a single biomarker we're looking for, but rather a combination of biomarkers that can particularly help us figure out the management of patients. Uh, another interesting biomarker uh, has been serum amyloid A, which is an acute phase reactant. Uh, and it's been particularly useful uh, in patients with COVID. Uh, in patients with COVID, uh, higher levels occur in patients with more severe illness, and there's a higher risk of death with higher levels. And we can see here in a number of studies, when we look at milder versus severe illness, and I've just highlighted a few here, uh, serum amyloid A levels are particularly high in the more severe than in the less severe illness of patients. There's also a tremendous need to use biomarkers in COVID-19, where antimicrobial stewardship is essential, particularly on admission, where many patients get antibiotics, but very few have documented bacterial infection. And here there's been uh, clear evidence that many patients have infiltrates uh, at the time of admission that are viral and not bacterial. We don't wanna use antibiotics. Later on, of course, patients can evolve and develop ventilator-associated pneumonia. And we would like to withhold antibiotics early on when patients don't have bacterial infection, but at the same time, recognize the early emergence of ventilator-associated pneumonia as a complication, which can occur in 20 to 40% of COVID patients. And so there's been a lot of interest in using a biomarker like procalcitonin for this purpose to help us withhold antibiotics when levels are low on admission and use serial measurements in ventilated patients to diagnose VAP. So biomarkers can serve a number of very useful roles. Uh, I think that they've really come to the fore uh, during COVID-19, where all of us are looking for guidance on when to use antibiotics properly uh, for bacterial infection in the setting of a known viral infection. So that's a very brief overview of some of the key concepts uh, for biomarker use and some of the potential applications.